Good evening, Taylor Tots, or morning or afternoon, or whenever you happen to be watching this. Uh, today, I'm going to try to just kind of give us a review of, again, as you can see here, I'm trying to point to it. Oop, there we go. One and two and three step review. Um, just kind of want to start out the video right off the bat with kind of Mole Island, because uh, again, Mole Island is the core of this. Um, because that is the flow chart that we can use to honestly solve one and two step problem. And as you've seen, it really, really helps a lot with three step as well. Um, to keep this video kind of around 20 minutes or so, uh, what I would like to do is kind of just have a few numbers already ready to go for you. Um, so we're going to kind of peruse through this a little bit um, and we'll kind of go from here. And again, I hope this is the one that's better than it was in the morning. Um, as you can kind of notice right off the bat, with Mole Island, um, with Mole Island, you can kind of already notice here, sorry, that with representative particles, we have some magic kind of buzzwords that kind of go along with it. Again, RP is representative particles. I didn't uh, have the space to write all that out. But again, if you see formula units, atoms, or molecules, you're going to be starting with the particle island. And again, Going toward Mole Island, you are going to be dividing by Avogadro's number, which is n sub a. Again, m sub a is, again, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And if you're going towards Mole, uh, sorry, towards Particle Island, you're going to be multiplying by that number. Again, we'll do a little bit of that. It will show the cancellations, um, but that's not actually going to be too bad. Over here, though, Volume Island. Volume Island, we have our 22.4 number. And I know you can't really see that one very good, but I know you can see this one better. Again, going toward Mole Island is always dividing, and going towards Volume Island is multiplying by, again, 22.4 liters. Here, again, going to Mass Island, multiplying as you go up, and dividing as you go down. Um, again, we actually also have a Stoic Island kind of prepared over here, ooh, as well as some problems. Whoop! There it is. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, just some things I want to have very, very clear, uh, kind of right off the bat for you guys. Um, molar mass is, again, how much does one mole of some substance weigh? Again, that can be really any substance. That could be any amount of substance. Um, I have said molar volume a few times in class. And I just wanted to let you know that the molar volume is just 22.4 liters. That's why we've been using that kind of magic number this whole time. And again, that n sub a is Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles in one mole. Um, again, it's always that many particles in one mole. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be nitrogen, salt, sugar, uh, methane, um, aluminum sulfate, ammonia. It doesn't matter. It's always going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. And again, the reason why I know a lot of people are here are probably going to be these practice problems. And again, you're going to have to forgive me a little bit. I am going to be going back and forth with the camera because I kind of want to focus in on them. Because again, I don't, well, I can try it at least. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see the problems from there. But again, you will have to forgive me. I will be kind of going back and forth. But here, let's start with this problem. Now, here's the thing. We have 1.3 times 10 to the 24th atoms of helium. Whoops, I'm not even looking at the right problem. 15 grams of sodium sulfate. Sorry, I was doing the problem underneath it. Um, sodium sulfate to formula units of so, uh, sodium sulfate. Well, starting off, again, if we go back to our mole island, okay, which again, this is kind of what I mean by we're going to go back and forth just a little bit. Here, as you can see, I have grams. So I'm going to be starting off, as soon as I can kind of get this in frame a little bit, I'm going to be starting off up here at Mass Island, and I'm going to be going to formula units, so I'll have to go down to moles, and then to particle island, meaning that this is going to be a two-step problem. So again, let's kind of see how this one works a little bit. With this, and again, I do apologize for going back and forth, with this, what we're going to start out with, I'm going to use blue, we're going to have our 15 grams of sodium sulfide. And we are again going to moles. Now to go to moles, again, I know I can't have Avogadro's number up, but again, I know you can have it in front of you. <coughs> you are going to divide by the molar mass. And I happen to know that the molar mass for sodium sulfide is going to be 
23 plus 23 plus 32. And that is going to end us up with, should be 78 grams in one mole of Na2S. That's really nifty for us because, I'm just going to grab a, a slightly different color again, we know that our grams of sodium sulfide are going to cancel. Again, grams cancels with grams. That's very nice. Well, that's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking about formula units. So, to simply solve this problem, again, I am going again from mole island to particle island. You are going to multiply by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And that's again going to be formula units per one mole. Again, both of this will be sodium sulfide. Going through this as well, the really nice thing is, just like before, moles cancel with moles, Na2S cancels with Na2S. Our units are the same. All you have to do to plug this into your calculator is kind of just follow the flow chart. Again, going back to the camera, making sure you can kind of see all the work. It looks like I apologize, I did cut off a little bit at the end. My bad on that. But again, there is the work. And again, I kind of wanted to show you exactly what I'm plugging into my calculator. So I'm going to zoom this out just a tad. Apologize for all the camera manipulation. It's kind of tough because um, I just want to make sure you can see everything. Again, I'm just testing. want to make sure you can see my calculator. So when I'm plugging all this in, again, I apologize, you're not going to be able to see it. But you're literally going to have to do 15 times 1 times Avogadro's number, and you saw I'm putting in parentheses, divided by 78, divided by 1, and now I hit enter. And once I hit enter, whoop, I apologize, I think because it's shaky you're not able to see that number very well. Apologize for that, it's not focusing very good. Let me try to get out. There we go, a little bit. We are going to have 1.158 times 10 to the 23rd. And that's going to be our answer for this problem. So, our answer with this one is 1.16 times 10 to the 23rd. Again, that's going to be formula units of Na2S. You do want to make sure that you have the full unit. Formula units is the unit and of what? Again, this really matters with research problems, which I know you've already caught up on. And there it is. Now, going down to the next one, going down to the next one, you can kind of see, I'm just going to move the camera in a little bit, make that a little bit easier. I'm already, I'm asking about atoms to moles. Well, if I go look at my mole island, as I go from, again, atoms over here to moles, that's a one-step problem. There's only one step right there. So this problem is actually not too bad at all. Well, how do I solve it? I can solve it the same way I solved this one. I know 1.3 times 10 to the 24th atoms. This time, I'm going to be dividing, and that's atoms of HE. I'm going to be dividing by Avogadro's number. And I'm going to put the big number in parentheses just to help me out. Because again, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of helium is one mole of helium. And again, kind of just like the other one, atoms cancel with atoms, HE cancels with HE, and I'm left with moles of helium exactly like I want. So again, plugging this one into my calculator, just so you can kind of see it, just a 10, I apologize, I think I was just too close before. Uh, parenthesis, again, that's a big number, 1.3 times 10 to the 24th, end parenthesis, divide by, oops, sorry, that's not how I normally do it. I do times one, because again, there's a one right here. I always do the times one. You can see that right there. And then I'm going to divide this by, in parentheses, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and parentheses, now I'm clicking enter. I didn't click enter before. And here, I got 2.16 moles. 
And that is the answer that I got before. So this one will be 2.16 moles. Moles of what? Moles of HE. And that's just a quick example of a one and two step problem. Again, the units always cancel out with each other, which is really, really nice. Um, and we can keep that going. Now, the last thing I just wanted to go over is just because I just want to have something on it is molar mass. Um, again, I know I already did a molar mass problem here um, a little bit, and you can kind of see in the upper corner, that's what I did for the sodium sulfide. You know, just to be honest, I probably should put grams per mole here, because that is the unit. Well, I kind of just want to focus really quickly on this problem right, oops, pardon me. I kind of want to focus on this last one at the bottom right here. The molar mass of ammonium phosphate. This one's actually pretty challenging because it covers a lot of the things that people struggle with. Well, here's kind of the thing. A lot of people normally only do this distributive with the three to the four. Again, okay, I got 12 hydrogens, which is true. But a lot of people forget that this three not only goes for the hydrogen, but also goes for the nitrogen, because again, this distributes. So here, I'm gonna have three, nitrogen is 14, plus 12 hydrogens. Um, again, three times 14, just to do that calculation really quickly, because I never remember that number, is 42, plus 12. So this ammonium chunk is gonna be what? 53-ish. Well, there's only one phosphorus here, that's 31, or 30.97. And I have four oxygens, which is again gonna be plus 31, plus 64. Um, again, a lot of people sometimes freak out because it's like, oh dang, PO4 is on the back of your periodic table, it's phosphate, that's, we don't know how to find that. You're allowed to break a phosphate into its elemental parts. 31, four 16s is 64 total for the oxygen. And then all I have to do is add these numbers up. 42 plus 12 plus 31 plus 64 is a very mighty 149 grams per mole. You know, it might not be the hardest problem that we've talked about, but it does cover all the things that people do wrong. Um, again, just make sure that you're being careful with that. And again, don't forget that that four only is for oxygen. There's nothing to do with that phosphorus. There's just kind of a one there. Um, but again, not too bad, not too crazy. Um, and again, that's just a quick kind of review of one and two step problems with the molar mass, stuff like that. Again, it's just really a lot of canceling. Um, but in kind of the remaining kind of eight or so minutes, I really kind of just wanted to go through just one good three step problem. And again, uh, I am going to apologize. I am going to kind of modify and bring over kind of my new prop because I was just preparing it. There we go. Oop, that didn't center like I wanted it to. There we go. Um, Kind of not, sorry about that. Zoom out a little bit. This is gonna be our fun guy for three-step problems. Again, here, the big, big difference, oops, wrong way, is this. What the heck do I do when I'm in moles to moles? I don't know, I have no idea. I have no idea at all. So, I just kinda of wanted to focus in on that a little bit, and I don't mean focus as a pun. Um, again, the first step is just a one-step problem over here, and the third step is this kind of a, another one-step problem over here. The thing that gets people the most is this two-step problem here. Well, you always get this from, and I'm going to try to grab a purple really quick so it stands out, you're always going to get this from a balanced chemical equation. And I'm going to put four exclamation points on that because that's how important that it is. That balanced chemical equation will tell you what to do here every single time. And that's really, really cool because as long as you can balance, you're going to be able to solve these all really, really fast. So again, I'm going to kind of remove this. Again, you might want to take yours out really quick, pause the video, do what you need to do. Because I'm going to be taking this away, and I'm going to kind of just assume that you have it out just because it's going to really help me out 
um, with the writing. Because again, I want to kind of keep everything so I can span over it all really quickly at the end of the video. So here's kind of a blank space. We're going to kind of work with this space right here. Well, here's the thing. First off, you need a balanced chemical equation. So how about we come up with one? Let us do zinc sulfide reacts with oxygen to presume, produce zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide. Again, I'm just going to check the camera, make sure that's big enough that I have it in the frame. And I actually don't have it in the frame. I'm so sorry. Hashtag noob. Again, again, I know some of these I, I need to kind of figure out a little bit, but I apologize for that. Um, someone should do like a compilation of all my fails in the videos. That'd be pretty funny. Um, but again, here's a chemical equation that we need to balance. Um, now, when balancing this, again, the number one thing that you're going to want to do is find the big scary guy. Well, nothing really looks too scary to me. But do oxygen last? Do oxygen last? Always. And I see oxygen in not one, not two, but three things. Three things. So because of that, I got to do that last. I'm going to put a one here with the zinc. Um, now, just playing around a little bit with that, just kind of do a little bit of a reminder. Zinc, there is one. I'm going to put a one here. So zincs are good. Uh, I see one sulfur. I see one sulfur. Here, I got three oxygens. Total. Here I've got two total. Uh, well, that's not going to work. And again, if you have an odd and an even, that's going to be the odd even rule. So again, what you're going to want to do is just very simply double everything. That becomes a two. That becomes a two then. I have two sulfurs here, I now need two here, and that's going to be four oxygens, six oxygens. Which means I should be balanced now just kind of doing that. Two, three, three, two, uh, so, sorry, two, three, two, two is going to be our balance, and we're good to go. Okay, just a quick little review on balancing. Um, magnet. I will not give you this. You need to be able to figure this out. I will give you enough information to do that. Honors, you are fine. I will always give you this as well. You will have to balance it. Regular, I will give this to you. You will not have to balance it. So again, magnet, you have to figure this whole thing. Honors, just the balance. And regular, I will give it to you. So let's just do a quick three-step problem. So let us say that we want to go from 50 grams of O2, and we want to figure out how many liters of sulfur dioxide there are. So I'm going to go from grams to liters. Well, here's how I would do that. I start with 50 grams. Again, I'm just going to kind of set up my flow chart. I might need to adjust it, but that's okay. Well, looking at this, um, I would be starting out, as you can kind of tell from here, whoops, I'm going to be starting out at Mass Island. And as I go from Mass Island down, I'm going to be using molar mass, and that is going to be division. Well, doing that, I need to find the molar mass of O2. Again, O2's molar mass is going to be 16 plus 16 for a mighty 32 grams per mole. So I'm going to divide by 32 grams in one mole. Again, both of those are O2. I don't care about that, though. I care about going all the way to liters of SO4. So here, if you're looking at this again, I'm kind of right here right now. I just was able to get two moles through division. I need to jump this step right here. Here's how I do that. I use the balanced chemical equation. 
So I don't care about oxygen. So moles of oxygen need to go here. That's an M, sorry. Well, how many moles of O2 are there? Well, there's three. And I got that three because I balanced this right here. So there's your three. Well, where am I trying to go? I'm trying to go to SO2. So to do that, I need moles of SO2. And that one's going to be a two. So again, I got the two and the three from the balanced equation, which is really, really nice um, because this is going to be the mole step. And again, that's always the mole step. Moving forward, I'm going to be having one mole of SO2 is going to be 22.4 liters of SO2. And the reason that I know that is because if I were to go up just a little bit and I zoom in, zoom in, as you go from moles to volume, you are going down. Oop, where's my finger? There it is. So you are going to be multiplying by 22.4. Again, that's exactly what's going to be happening as you are working here. Um, very simply put, going through this, grams will cancel with grams, O2 will cancel with O2, moles cancel with moles, O2 cancels with O2, moles and moles, SO2 and SO2, and you are left with liters of SO2 exactly like you want. Now, all you have to do, plug this bad boy into your calculator. So again, this is where it kind of gets big, which is kind of exciting. So I'm gonna kind of sneak over here. Uh, I kind of want to sneak over here so you can see it. I apologize. Probably not gonna be able to see the whole thing, but we'll kind of glide along. 50 times one times two times 22.4 divided by 32, divided by three, divided by one, enter. And as you can see, I got 23.3 repeating liters of SO2. And that is the answer I got earlier when I was just testing these. So the answer is going to be 23.33 liters of SO2. Two. And that is how you can solve a three-step problem. That is how you can solve a three-step problem. Um, again, this was just a quick refresher. It's going to be around 23, 24 minutes. I kind of just really wanted to focus uh, briefly on just a few things. Uh, I'm going to kind of just summarize, uh, kind of just stare at it for a minute. So if you ever wanted to pause the video and kind of check it out, uh, you can. Um, again, the first thing we talked about in the video is going to be Mole Island. Again, pretty good. You guys have been doing well with this. We have our stoichiometry island here. You are allowed to use both of these on our flowchart. We did a quick little review on just a little vocab stuff, nothing that you don't already know. We did a two step. We did a one step, we went over a molar mass, and to finish it off, we just did a three step stoichiometry problem. Which means we've actually accomplished quite a lot in our little bit of time here. Um, again, um, quiz on Thursday. Test is going to be next week, which will be the week of March 7th, probably Friday. Again, if you need anything, please, please, please just let me know. Again, we're off to a pretty good start here. I know I've been going pretty fast. I know I've been a little off as well. Um, I'm working on it. We'll get better. Um, you guys are doing a great job. Uh, but just remember, again, whatever you need help with for this unit, um, again, just kind of let me know. No, I'm not wearing socks. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm not wearing socks right now. YOLO. Um, hashtag no socks. Um, but again, this is a lot of stuff, but it kind of all follows a pattern. 
Um, so again, let me know if you need anything. Again, peace road, bro. Have a good one. And again, if you need anything, you know, let me know. Uh, I can do whatever I can to help. Later. Bye.